from this picture, this is what I want to try and achieve. Now I've had this um, picture on my bedroom wall for years and it's a 1950s fashion uh, photograph and I just love that. So I've sat and pondered how to make the pattern. I think I'm there now. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to make with the pattern. And I'm going to show you three different versions so that there's leeway for doing different things with it. And the, although the pattern is in the rough at the moment, uh, by the time this video is finished, I will know if it works perfectly. It will be refined and it will be for sale in my Etsy shop and it will be free to my tier four members. So if you want to join the membership, if you choose tier four, you will be able to have the pattern for free. You just email me once you've joined and I email you back the PDF. So these are the pattern pieces, the top, the side of the hat and the brim. And as I say, it's taken me a while to figure out size wise and how this is going to work now i'm going to show you the easiest version first and that is going to be cut from wool felt now this is wool felt this is not acrylic felt it's proper wool felt um i don't think this would work with acrylic but we'll we'll see now on this version, I'm not going to use the brim. I'm just going to make a soft little beret. Oh gosh, this it's got lots of fluff on it. Right, so what I'm going to need is the side and the top. And these have all got to be placed on the fold, but so I don't waste fabric, I'm just doing uh, the brim first and actually to, even more so I don't waste fabric I'm turning it over this way okie dokie and finding some pins that aren't bent cheap pins are horrible don't ever buy them they just bend 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 not worth having so okay and we're going to cut out the wool felt. You can cut this out with scissors or um, a rotary cutter. Rotary cutters are good for this sort of thing. Okay, so that's my top. And you'll see <clears throat> that line there is our seam allowance. So I'm going to put a pin in the middle there. And a pin at the edge of my seam allowance here. And what I've got to do is run a seam line down there. Now I'll probably chalk it so. Right. Now the good thing about felt is it doesn't really have a wrong side and a right side. So I'm going to stitch that together there. And with this, <coughs> I'm going to stitch the back seam here. Ooh, not quite wide enough, there we are. Now 
now it's up to you whether you do a lining on this if you don't do a lining it will be quite floppy but I'm going to stitch it together first see if I feel it needs a lining if so I'll do one but we'll see how we go so I'm just going to get the machine out now so I've done my two seams and what I'm going to do is just snip down that edge just right not to your stitching but just so that it opens out and you need to press that flat with a steam iron okay so I'm going to do that and with this one the same we need to press it open flat with the steam iron like so so I'm just going to do that so I've pressed my seams open and what we need to do is join this, the longer edge, to the circle. And we do that right sides together. So match up your seams like so. I'll use clips for this. So I'm going to clip it all the way around and then I'm going to stitch it again on the machine. So here we have our beret uh, put together, the side and the top, and I've turned it the right way around for a minute. And what I've done is I've lightly swirled some Petersham, okay? And we're going to attach this and then fold it over. Now we need the longest the shortest edge is the edge, the inner curve rather, as the edge we're sewing to the hat. And what I want to do is stitch it about half an inch down because I'll need to snip this for it to fold under. So what I'm doing is about half, if you hold your Petersham like that, you'll and stitch this edge. If you're not confident about working out that half inch chalk mark and do it you know chalk mark this side and measure it right so I've stitched that on oh, got some long threads from somewhere and I've got to turn that over like so and press in place and catch stitch so I'm just going to go and press it with a cloth so I've pressed the Petersham and I'm going to catch stitch the edge to the felt. But before I do that, I want some bit of decoration for the top. And then I will have to, once I've done the top, I'll have to just steam this and pop it on a block just to equal out the little seams, okay? But I'm gonna get a button. So what I've done is I'm using any old button, a biggish button really for the top, and I need a little bit of the felt. Now I want enough of the felt to go around over the top of the button. So, so I've cut a circle of felt that should meet in the middle of the button. Let's see. Yeah. And then what I need to do is run a thread all the way around the outside to pull that up to the middle. So just do a running thread. Put your button in the middle. Pull up your thread. 
and then just do some over stitches to hold it all together. This works for covering any buttons. It's just a simpler way. If you don't need to see, if you're not going to see the back of the button, it doesn't really, really matter what it looks like from the back. Which we're not going to see the back. So I flatten it down as much as possible. And then we're going to stitch that up to the top of our hat. And I was thinking, oh, I could have a little something. What do you think? A little bit of ribbon coming off from the button? Let's see what that's going to look like. Might look horrible. And I might say, oh, no. Uh, what do I be? Right, so that's our little little ribbon decoration on the top. Might not be everybody's cup of tea, but I thought it was a bit sweet. Right, so I'm going to press that, or steam it rather, just to get those little edges nice and smooth onto a round block. And um, I'll show you the finished result in a moment. Right, for the second hat in this series, we're going to be making it from fabric, <coughs> excuse me, and it will need to be lined. So here I've got some black cotton fabric, or poly cotton, I'm not too sure. And I'm going to have to cut a side in lining, a brim in lining, and the top. So I'm just going to pin those on and get started. So I've cut them all out of lining. <coughs> that's my brim, that's my side band, and that's my top. And if you've got your bit of chalk candy, just write brim, be for brim, side band. And this is the top of the hat. And again, we'll need to mark our seam allowance, so from there to there. Okay, so I'm going to stitch down there. Okay, like that. Now I've got to cut it out of the main fabric, and I've got some quite heavy, I don't know what it is, it's sort of canvasy material, but I thought it would work, so... We will give it a go. It's, it's a bit dusty. It's been in my stash for a while. I'll need a, a clothes brush on it. So I've got my lining parts cut out and my main body parts. And what I need now is <clears throat> I need some interfacing. For the brim ignore the fact i've written it on there because we don't need it on there using for the interfacing is pelmet interfacing um i sell this in my shop it's double-sided iron on but you can get this anywhere really that you that you buy curtains so you just have to make sure you've got a wide enough piece um for the curve that you're cutting out M50. It's about 30, yeah, it's about 12 inches wide, 30 centimetres. This one. Right, so I'll put that on there and cut it out.
<clears throat> right, if you do buy the pattern for me or have it for free, you'll find this, the, the interfacing brim is going to be a separate pattern because I've realised that the interfacing obviously has to be narrower than the fabric, otherwise there's no leeway for folding up. So with this one, I'm just going to trim the edges to give me... Um, but you can see from what I'm, how I'm working this all out, you can see what a lot of work goes into working out how a pattern's going to function, if it's going to work, etc. And sometimes it's not until you actually start making it that you realise, oh, should have thought of that, should have thought of this. But I like you to see what's happening. So there's our, there's our piece of interfacing. Right, first things first. There is our brim in the fabric, okay? Right, what I'm gonna do is I've got my main piece of fabric for the brim. I don't seem to have a wrong and a right side, this fabric. I quite like that side. I'll go with that as the right side. And I'm going to just stitch my lining to it just on this top edge. Okay, just along here. Cut it out so badly. I should have gone and got my decent scissors, shouldn't I? <sighs> I've allowed about a centimetre for seam allowances, so I'll let you know once the pattern's totally finished, I'll let you know whether that works or not. So I'm going to stitch that now. Right, what I'm going to do is just trim this seam. I'm going to press it open with the iron, so I'm just off to do that now. I've um, pressed, pressed that edge, you know, quite as, as neat as you can get it. Okay, now what we've got to do is we've got to stitch these two edges together. So you open it, let's just trim that so it's the same width. Right, let's just check that one, yeah. So what you do is you turn it that way and you join it to that side, okay? So we're joining it right sides together and we're going to stitch along this edge here. That kind of machine. So I've stitched the two sides together and I'm going to press those open again with the iron. So I'm just going to run a top stitch very narrow right close up to the edge. So my brim has now been top stitched right close to the edge and I'm going to put my stiffener in. Now Excuse the fact that mine is now joined in the middle. I had a slight wobble and accidentally cut it in half. So I had to join it. Right, so make sure you put it in the right way round. You'll soon know because it won't fit otherwise. Get it right up against your um, top stitched edge. And clip or pin all your edges together, pushing the 
the um, stiffening down as much as you can. Now I've used iron on stiffening, but you don't actually have to iron it. You could just, you know, leave it as is because it's not going to go anywhere once it's all joined up. Push it right in and we've got an edge to work with. Again, when you're making patterns, it, sometimes, you know, what works on the computer or in your head is different to when you actually get it in the actual form you want it. So I've I've made adjustments, but when you get the pattern, it will be fine. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to run um, a stitch round on the machine just to keep everything together. Okay. So, right, that's the brim. That's the brim done. <laughs> to the main body of the hat. So, this is the main fabric. Figure out which is your right side and your wrong side. I want that to be. And now my longest curve will be attached to my hat. So again, once these seams are pressed out flat, like so, we will join that seam to that seam. and go round. You might have to ease the fabric as you go. Dep I mean, it depends really on the fabric you're using, but you might have to ease it onto the curves. I'm going to stitch these two together. Okay. Now, because this fabric frays quite a bit, what I'm going to do is just trim the seam up a bit. And I'm just going to run a zigzag. Okay. So, those two pieces are now put together. I've got to do exactly the same, but with the linings. So, in effect, we're making a second hat. So, oh. Right, this is where version two without the brim comes into play. If you want to make this beret and fabric instead of felt, like the first one we I showed you, what you do is put right sides together. Oops, so you've got the lining inside the hat, right sides together. You stitch all the way around, leaving a gap of two inches and turn it inside out. And then, of course, you've got a hat. And you haven't got the brim. But we're doing this one with the brim. So what I need to do now is sew the brim to the main body of the hat. So I turn it right side out, like this. Okay, uh, where's my, put this over the top, line up my seam edge. And join the two together. Run out of, I've run out of bobbin thread. Isn't that annoying? And that happens just towards the end. <laughs> so I'm going to put some more bobbin, bobbin thread. Right, so the brim is now stitched to the top of the hat. And now I've got to join the lining. Wrong side of the lining to right side of the hat. Okay. You have to squeeze it in a bit because obviously the brim's bigger than the 
the hat as such. So I've got the lining and I need to, I wish I hadn't chosen black really, but you know, the original hat was black and it looked so fantastic. So. Again, picked up the cotton. Now what we need to do is we need to leave a gap of about two inches so that we can turn the hat inside out. So once you've got it roughly in position, we'll stitch but leave a gap. <sighs> Actually, I've left a bit of a bigger gap, it's probably three or four inches, because I know this is going to be quite tough to turn inside. Oh. And I'm just going to trim my seam a bit. I'm going to turn inside. Oh. It's going to be tough getting the brim through. But it's all going to look a bit crinkly and wrinkly, but don't worry. Things will come to pass. <coughs> Pull it all out. Right, push my lining back in. Right, so my lining's inside the hat. And I've got this little section here where I haven't stitched it down yet because I needed that gap. But what I'm going to do now is sew the, the sweatband in. Now, what I've got to do is push the hat this way, okay? And I'm going to sew the sweatband along here so it keeps everything in a nice, neat, straight line. So, now I've got to attach my Petersham and I've got to just slip stitch the edge where I turned it inside out. So, I've got... I've just got a quick uh, stitch to do here. Just to hold it in place while I stitch the Petersham in. Now, because I want the Petersham to be the right way round, what I've got to do is I've got to stitch it to the top edge and then it folds under. So I've got to make sure the curly Honestly, I've got to find a way of saying not the curly edge or the curly edge. I don't know. Yeah. Right, so we want the biggest curve this side. Biggest curve, curly edge. I don't know. Uh, but because I want to sew it the other way around because it's easier to get it on the machine. Right, so I've set oh, bits everywhere. I've sewn my Peter Shim on. I'll turn that part of the hat the right way round, like that. Okay, so it's like that. 
and then on the inside it's like that and I just need to press it all or steam it and put it onto a, a block so that you've got a nice neat edge and we've got to put our button on the top as we did before and cut off all my threads <laughs> and make it look neat and tidy <laughs> anyway I shall just put the button on I'll steam it and block and block it onto a hat block just to get it into shape and we'll take a look